relationships work uh, anything is possible right is something we all need to understand is absolutely anything is possible um, good bad ugly anything is possible can they work it depends depends who you are depends who they are uh, do I have some tips for you yes I do I have a free guide that you can download it's in the link tree in my bio so if you want some tips on how to create intimacy maintain intimacy resolve conflict for your long distance relationship go grab that free guy i am so good how are you how are you how are you hello my loves good morning good morning are there some newbies if you're new here say newbie here newbie here hello linda Lindsay. sorry i'm wearing a light top makes it harder to read names yes you're so welcome lovely I got lots of free stuff for you guys. Uh, there's a free book. There's a free long distance guide. There's a free meditation guide. I do a giveaway every month for a free coaching session, like a one hour coaching session. Um, yeah. I got a podcast, got a YouTube channel. I have a blog. I have a blog. I have so many questions that come up like number one on Google when you, when you do Google search. Um, uh, yeah Google what if he's not ready what if he says he's not ready for a relationship Google that guess who comes up number one that's right Canada's dating coach that's right babies good morning lovelies oh I feel like my internet froze no did it mm -hmm. oh I can't wait for my new internet to come. Hey, my girlfriend, I broke up because she said she needs to find her identity. What does that mean? It means exactly what she said. It means she 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 didn't know who she was and she really wants to be on her own so she can do her own thinking and get inside her own head and not feel like she needs to appease anybody. Good morning. How to stop panic attacks on a first date. So that starts before, right? The the kind of behaviors that you guys do to reduce anxiety in high anxiety situations are things you need to do before those situations. So meditation is going to shrink your amygdala. This is fight or flight. This is where stress, fear, and anxiety comes from. When you shrink that part of your brain, you physically reduce your capacity to feel those emotions. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit that button that says free meditation guide. Uh, this takes you to a page that gets you started on meditation, start a video, start a track, uh, you know, guide to download. There is a chart so you can start tracking your minutes or head over to my YouTube channel, type in Canada Dating Coach in YouTube. You're going to find my channel. Uh, go to my Let's Meditate playlist, track number two every day, minimum once a day, but ideally twice a day with headphones. If you scroll halfway down that Let's Meditate playlist, you're going to see that there is a tutorial for box breathing. Box breathing is what Navy SEALs do to control their fear and anxiety. So if you want advanced anxiety reduction technique, do box breathing. So go watch that video, learn what it's about, do the tutorial. The, the guy who teaches you this is an ex Navy SEAL. He teaches people how to pass the Navy SEAL test. Highly recommend. Advice for dealing with ADHD. Uh, give me behaviors, my love. What are the behaviors that are getting in your way? So I can give you the behaviors that are going to help you overcome this and turn it around. I find your counsel extremely inspired. What is your faith and how does it inform your approach? So my faith is energy. I have faith in energy that we all have the ability to use our energy and create what it is that we want in our lives. We are all creators. Uh, this... You know, I, I shocked you guys last night when I said, I am God. And the way I write God is with a small g. Because, you know, for me, there there is no deity. It's just we are all energy. We are all interconnected. When you think about a friend and a minute later you get a text message from them, it's the interconnection of the energy that is working. So when you have a, 
I'm gonna tell my people what's going on here just for a second. So you guys, this is my friend Justin. Um, and I, I like to, Justin, Justin, this is the second time that he's come live with me on the phone. And he's good, he's so open about this. But I love doing this with you guys because it gives you the opportunity to understand what a platonic friendship looks and sounds like. Hello, my love. Hi. So, okay, so you're moving to BC. I am. Port Coquitlam. Is this a job offer that you got? Um, kind of. I sort of went to seek it out within the company, and when before I even got the chance to ask, they offered me a position. Nice. So, yeah, so apparently, you know, a lateral, lateral move in terms of my responsibilities, uh, lots of learning opportunity, uh, lots of room for growth there with... Uh, uh, my skill set and, um, you know, taking on some new challenges there and, uh, mountains and ocean. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, nothing's keeping me here and it's kind of something I've toyed around with the idea of doing for a little while. And, you know, I think realistically what, what prevented me from doing it before was, um, you know, ended, ending up out of a relationship into another relationship and, you know, not thinking about it anymore. So when yeah. I thought about it, um, you know what spawned this whole thing, actually? I credit my brother with all of it. Um, you know, I spoke with him on Thursday, and uh, every time I talk with my brother, I leave the, you know, I leave the, the interaction feeling like I've learned something. I feel motivated. I feel inspired. Um, you know, he's kind of done a lot of moving around in the last uh, 10 years of his life all over the world. And uh, he kind of just said, like, you know, dude, go. And I went to bed that night and woke up in the morning and the first thing I did was God was on the table. So I said, you know what, the universe is telling me to do this. Time to go. Yeah. Would you have said yes if you were still with Karina? Pardon me? Would you have said yes if you were still with Karina? I don't even know if that conversation would have come about, frankly. I mean... I was still with her. I know she looked at the idea of moving out there, so it's definitely not something that would have been off the table entirely, but I don't know if the conversation with my brother would have even happened because I wasn't really, you know, part of me was thinking because I'm going out there next week for vacation anyways, and I'm going to work for a few days, my idea was to look at life, in a, you know, look at the, the environment in a different respect when I went out there, like in a different mindset to actually think about it anyways um so you know I, I can't really say for sure but i mean i was already thinking about looking at it and seeing how i felt and then asking the question later but my brother pushed me to do it faster and it was funny because the i spoke with the guy in vancouver on friday morning and he just got approval on thursday to hire a senior and a junior so mm. the opportunity just opened up as you know, my brother and I talked about it. It just kind of looked like it was supposed to happen. Are you the senior or the junior? No, I'm the senior. Oh, look at you! Yeah, I'm a. I, my title is already a senior now. So, okay. Um, so it's it's a good move for everybody. It's a good move for the office out there. Um, I've uh, you know I'm gonna bring a lot of wealth and knowledge to the table and uh, lots of opportunity for me to work on training the the juniors that are out there. They have a few of them. They like to do uh, do a full rotation, so they, they get lots of experience with all the different seniors out there. Um, you know, and, and lots of benefit from a financial perspective when it comes to the company because they typically send people out there, you know, 10, 10 times a year, maybe a dozen times at a cost of, um, you know, two or three thousand dollars each trip. So um, I've also tried. I'm in the middle of negotiating. The only thing that I'm sitting on, like everything is done, it's happening. I'm just waiting on a response back from my my chief operating officer with respect to uh, moving expenses because uh, I basically told him I'm looking at a $12,000 bill um, and he said, well, you know, we don't normally do that. Um, it's not something that we've done in a lot in the past, which I know is a load of bullshit because uh, he's moved here from, from New Jersey and was living in a condo that the company was paying for and I'm sure they paid for his trips back and forth to visit his wife. Um, so I went in armed with a full clip and not a rubber band gun. Uh, I went in and gave him everything I needed to point out the highlights and what, what benefits the company with me being there. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for him to have a conversation with the owner of the company and come back and tell me what they've got. 
Um, I've got some bargaining chips that I kept in my back pocket to counter them. If they come in and try and lowball me, I'm going to tell them, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a certain percentage. And I'm also, I've got, uh, you know, a week of driving I need to do out there to take my car and Luna with me. Right. So uh, I'm looking for that to be a paid week for me. And I'm also looking for another week for me to find lodging while I'm there. And I expect to be paid for those weeks. Um, so just kind of sitting on my hands, anxiously awaiting the, the response. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, if they're going to lowball me or, like, you know, and hit me real low with the number, I'm hoping they'll come in at 50% because, uh, you know, I'll, I'll basically accept that with those couple of weeks. Um, but if they come in at 50, uh, at least, then I'll, I'll accept it and I'll move on. And when I go there, um, coincidentally, I'll be there for, in Vancouver for the last three days of June. So if I can go and find something that's available for September 1, then I'll, I'll send my letter off as of July 1st and come back and get aggressive with uh, getting everything sorted and getting out of here. Wow. Yeah, I've already pretty much got everything like laid out, who I'm using, what I'm using, what I need, you know, uh, all the moving boxes, I'm going to get the containers, you know, because uh, from, from a, you know, efficiency perspective and also for, you know, it's better for the environment, um, makes everything easy. So I've got all of that lined up and costs outlined already. So uh, yeah, just waiting for that to come back and then that's the final nail on the coffin basically. I, I really, I kind of want to make a point here because um, 80% of my audience is female and okay. I want women to understand that you need to negotiate like a man when it comes to getting what you deserve from the company that you work for. Never be afraid to ask for what you want. That's 100% on point, you know, and I, that's why I, I know my boss quite well under the, under these circumstances. He's uh, one of the cheapest people on the planet. Now, granted, that is part of his position, but um, it, when I went in for salary negotiations a few years back, um, I went in with, you know, what I needed to arm myself with to counter everything that he came and threw at me. And it took us three meetings over the course of three months to be able to hammer things out, but I beat him. Yeah. Uh, I got what I wanted. I didn't get it all in one foul swoop, but I was willing to negotiate because I'm not playing hardball with the company that I'm, you know, it's not like a give it to me or I'm leaving circumstance. It's kind of like, you know, I'm just looking to, I know what my worth is. I'm going after what I deserve and I know what I bring to the table. And um, I basically pulled his pants down every time he tried to tried to pound me into the ground, and I, I ended up winning. So uh, I intend to do the same thing here. And um, you know, I've been coached by my my senior VP, who's actually become a friend of mine, uh, more of an ally than a superior. Um, you know, we we don't look at each other like he's above me, and uh, he supported me through it. And you know, told me go to town, ask for the world, tell them what it is, shoot high, and. Uh, and again, my cousin, Adrian, who negotiated for, you know, a three quarters of a million dollar salary. Um, and he's got a background in economics. So I, you know, talk with those guys first, uh, used the, the tools at my fingertips and um, basically just, you know, got it all laid out and woke up in the morning while I went for a walk with the dog for an hour and a half. I had it all mapped out in my head, got home, made the phone call and, and it was all about execution there. And I think I really quickly annoyed my boss because he kept trying to go, oh, oh, you know, your salary is going to be higher than the other people out there, and now you're asking for more money. It doesn't look as attractive for us to send you out there. And I said, look, you guys can write this off as a business expense first and foremost. You'll no longer have these trips to pay for for other people. Um, you know, you, uh, you're you going to benefit from my wealth of knowledge and my ability to, to work and train other people out there. Um, I, you don't need to train me, which would cost, you know, probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars to train somebody new with their salary. Mm -hmm. Um, said I can hit the ground running and I can start, uh, relieving the pressure from everybody out there because they don't have enough time or manpower to do the work. So, yeah. uh, so I kind of just went in swinging and, uh, yeah. So just sitting on my hands waiting now. Yeah. But I mean, this, the smart move here, like, like stand firm for what it is that you want and deserve, but make it sound like a win-win. 100%, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm not looking at it like, I, I want to make it look more attractive from their side, because obviously I know why I'm going after it. Yeah. Um, so 
but, you know, that's the whole thing. Take out the brush and paint the big picture of how great it is for, for me to go out there, right? Yeah, give them what they need to, to say yes. Yep, 100%. And, you know, I mean, I laid out 12, 12 and a half thousand, and in reality, you know, I don't know what they're going to come back with. If they want to come back, I, I feel like it's going to be between 50 and 80%. Um, because I think it's just silly for them to, to look at it and shake their head. Um, if they, you know, come back somewhere in there, I'll probably, I'll probably be willing to accept it. Um, cause I, at the end of the day, they, they did offer me the job, but it wasn't formal. It was basically, you know, Hey, we need, we need help out here. Are you interested? And I, I jumped at it. So I'm also, you know, saving them the hassle of the, the interviews and going through it and taking a chance on somebody that might not work well and, you know, all of the above. So, mm-hmm. um, I'm not just going to accept anything they throw at me, no matter what it is. I'm still going to try and counter and say, like, look, these are some more bullet points, which I sent in an email. I gave them probably, you know, 30, 40 percent of these, these things I just mentioned, but I still kept some of those in my pocket so that there's more for me to throw on the table because I definitely learned and retained the experience uh, the first time. So just looking at trying to, uh, to make sure that uh, I get, I get the, the most I can out of the transaction. You're such a powerhouse. Love it. Yes. <laughs> so have you looked at places? Uh, I've been looking, yeah. So that's why I settled on Port Coquitlam. Um, it's more of a suburban neighborhood. It's 25 minutes with no traffic to downtown Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver, unfortunately, already had a quite the quite the high levels of, of homelessness and, and junkies everywhere. I saw it when I was there, and apparently because of COVID, it's become substantially worse. Okay. Um, and there isn't, if you look at a map of downtown Vancouver, there's no green anywhere. It's all concrete. So um, having the dog and, you know, taking her for an hour and a half in the woods and all of that sort of thing every morning, I need something like that at my fingertips. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and the cost, the cost is, is Quite substantial in um, it's quite substantial in, uh, in in Vancouver. So outside, I'm looking at I was already looking at increasing my rent by about fifteen percent here just to get something bigger. Okay. Um, so it's going to be exactly that uh, when I go into Port Coquitlam, and I will send you some photos later. But okay. some of the places I've looked at are floor to ceiling windows, a thousand square feet. One side you got mountains, the other side you got ocean. Um, and they're really nice brand new condos, you know, super trendy, um, you know, just, they, they, and I've talked to some of my friends that live out there who are coincidentally moving 10 minutes from where I'm looking at moving to, so I'll have some close friends there. Um, so all, all of us, you know, um, and definitely looking forward to, you know, a different way of life, a different mentality amongst, you know, society there and, uh, spending a lot more time in green space, which I've already been doing since I got the dog last year. So. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be great. I love it. I love it. Um, what's the cost? Just out of curiosity. Pardon me? What's, what does it cost? Um, like what, what would be the, what would the rent be for that? Like what you're looking at? So what I'm looking at is going to be somewhere between 23 and 2600 a month. Wow. Yeah. Holy moly. But- but I've been, like, the first places I was looking were some of the neighborhoods that I knew I liked in Vancouver, like, outside of the downtown core. Mm-hmm. But those are about around 3,000. 3, yeah. Um, but those places, like, a couple of the ones I was looking at were, were very pimped out. And, of course, I was drooling and licking my chops over it, but I don't want to spend $3,000. So yeah. uh, there were some places that looked like they were out of a magazine. I uh, was like, uh, you know, and if I could find something like that, you know, in Port Coquitlam, I would definitely up the ante a little bit. Mm. Uh, there was one that I saw that was 1,200 square feet, uh, 15 foot ceiling, the whole living room and the kitchen was full open breakfast bar, massive island, and you were on the ground floor with a garden wrapped around you with hedges so nobody could see and you had a patio outside your bedroom and the living room. So if I could wheel something like that at a little bit of a higher cost, I have no problem stretching myself a little bit for that. Yeah. Um, if, if I could end up with my own little garden oasis outside and, and even more importantly, an actual barbecue. I knew it. <laughs> I, I saw that the, right before you said that word. That's so cute. Yeah. I mean, barbecuing makes life easy. You cut up a salad, you barbecue meat, and dinner is done. Yes. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, 
but yeah, you know, it's it's very exciting. I, I'm really pumped up about it. I'm I'm super excited for the opportunity, and uh, yeah. you know, I had a long meeting with the guy who runs the office out there. Um, I was told by a couple of my colleagues who know him well and figured that because of our our personalities, there might be some big conflict because that fellow doesn't have the ability to just bow out of something and look at the greater good. Um, mm-hmm. Where my VP actually said to me yesterday, he says, Justin, I'll be perfectly honest, you fucking piss me off sometimes because I look at the way that you're doing something and it's not the way I would do it. I, I feel like I give you the advice and you still want to go your route. Says, but I have the ability to look at, like I said, the greater good. I have the ability to look at what you're doing and just accept that you're doing a great job. You're, you're doing it a little differently, but you're bringing in a lot of money. Clients are happy with you. Um, so I can, I can tap out of the, you know, the conversation where the other guy out there apparently is a little more controlling and he's a little younger. I think he's only in his early 30s, so I've got about 10 years on him. Um, so I think he's he's definitely struggling, and well, not so much struggling, but he's working towards that ability. Mm. Um, but he, but he's not there. So I said, you know what? I worked for a company that was run by a bunch of the biggest assholes in the world for 12 years of my life. I'm like, I'm not afraid to go out there and communicate with somebody if there's things that aren't working. Um, I'm not going to be there on any type of permanent basis. It'll obviously be indefinitely to start with. Um, but I've already made up my decision on two things. Um, one kind of relates to what you do for a living. Um, I've decided that when and if the time comes that I meet somebody out there, I'm not going to get myself involved with anybody who wouldn't be open to the idea of relocating somewhere else. Okay. Because I might, you know, I might decide I want to leave there at some point if it doesn't work for me in any way. Um, and I think my next step it would be if things are not working there, I will probably be looking at going to Europe. Oh, that's even further. <laughs> listen, uh, listen. You know what? I, I'm at that point now. Uh, I'm at that point now, Chantel, where I just, there's nothing keeping me here. All of my friends, yeah. you know how much I love all of you guys. And, uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, my friends are always going to be there. Yeah. Um, and there's always the incentive for people to come and visit me wherever I am. Yes. Uh, the place I'm looking at is going to be large enough with a big, you know, a, a second second bedroom tons of space i will be encouraging everybody to come and visit me um so you know it's uh definitely those couple things are 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 big big things that i've made decisions on so um you know i'll make it clear to anybody that i might decide to date that uh you know there's a possibility i might look at uh moving at some point so you know if this is not something that you would ever entertain doing or have the ability to do maybe we shouldn't move forward that's all so yeah so I, w- I was going to ask about sleepover space. There's there's going to be a second bedroom, and I'm nice. not getting a little apartment. There are a thousand square feet the one yeah. that I'm looking at, so there's tons of room. Um, you know, and I'm 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 going to make sure, like I said, the will the reason I'm willing to spread myself a little thinner, uh, stretch out my finances if I need to, is because I want to transition to. Um, I don't want to transition to have any dark areas if that makes sense i don't want to move into a place because i'm trying to save a couple bucks and have that overshadow any of the growth and happiness into my new position and my new life there Mm -hmm. so yeah so that's that's what's going on uh so i guess essentially the party that we're having in uh (gasps) july is going to be a a taylor's birthday slash summer soiree slash going away party for me yes Oh, yeah. Justin. Mm-hmm. I'm so mean, excited. You know, like, it's not like we saw much of each other in this past year, but it's still really nice knowing that you're close by and could pop in at any time. Yeah, I, 100%. You know, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss everybody. Um, but I know, I, you know, I, everybody's kind of said the same thing. It's a bittersweet thing. Everybody's yeah. excited and happy for me to take on a new endeavor and, uh, you know, I'll open up a new chapter in my life. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I'll miss everybody too. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a mutual thing. Yeah, and but, you know, uh, who yeah. knows? Maybe we'll do like a group trip out. Yeah, I would. I would love it. I'm gonna encourage everybody to come up and visit me. Like I got, mm-hmm. I'll have room for two to three people to stay there. You know, a couple and even somebody on a fucking air mattress. I don't care. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it happen. And you know that makes it a little more enticing when you don't have to pay for accommodations. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I, I will be. 
I will be I will be missing everybody, and it won't be long before I start pushing people to get out there. <laughs> yeah. Well, BC is like you know I lived in Vancouver and Chilliwack, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, and I think the whole new, you know, the new take on life and the, the new mentality with, you know, people in general and the public there, I think where I'm looking at living is get, I've gotten a green light from everyone I know who lives out there. Yeah. Everybody says it's fantastic. There's, you know, big green space within a five minute walk. Mm-hmm. Um, I currently have a friend of mine and her, her boyfriend who've been living in an RV on Vancouver Island for the whole winter into, they just moved over to the mainland and they're actually 10 minutes away from where I'm looking at moving as well so and she doesn't know anybody there so she was pretty amped up to hear that I'm coming out nice mm-hmm. nice yeah I've known her 12 years of my life so you know looking forward to uh, seeing her and uh, you know having uh, being able to cook each other dinners and just have some and she's got a younger dog too so okay. yeah so lots to look forward to mm-hmm yeah. But, yeah, but um, I, I'm going to let you go for the moment, Chantel. I'm sitting outside my house, and I'm going to eat someone's face. I'm starving right now. Ah, uh, <laughs> you're too cute. <laughs> but, uh, but I will give you a call sometime over the next... Uh, I'm out in BC for a couple of weeks, but when I get back, I'll give you a shout, and we'll figure out the food stuff, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll go from there. That sounds good. All right, love you lots. I hope you have a great day, and uh, I will talk to you soon. I love you. Bye. And that is what platonic friendship sounds like. That is what platonic friendship sounds like. Still, what's happening? Yeah. So, yeah. So my friend Justin, for those of you who kind of came in late, who's like, what? Um, But who stuck around? Look at you, so patient. Um, he called earlier and, uh, and, and said, oh, you know, I've got this great news to share and, um, uh, and then had to, uh, you know, get off the phone and go do an inspection, uh, and then call me back after. So I said, Hey, I'm going to be live. Are you, do you mind, do you mind if you're live when you call? It's like, no problem. I like that he gave us this opportunity to really help you understand what friendship sounds like between men and women that is platonic and you know it's loving it's supportive um it's it's about sharing right and 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 so really the difference between a good friend like justin is a good friend um we've we've been there for each other uh the difference between like a good friend and an intimate partner is the intimacy your partner should be a good friend and the difference is, is you also share physical intimacy with that person, physical intimacy, the kissing, the holding, the sex. Um, whereas with Justin, it's it's the same thing as a partner relationship, but without the physical intimacy. There is no flirtation. I look at my husband every day and I go, baby, why are you so sexy? You know, that's not something I say to Justin. Um, I'll say to my husband, baby, you still do it for me. I, I don't say that to Justin. So... It's fine to have these relationships, but what differentiates your romantic relationship from platonic relationships is is that sexuality, that that deep physical intimacy. Have you ever tried doing readings on the side? Uh so yeah, I mean I've been I've been doing cards for years now. Um, I mostly do it for myself, I'll do it for friends every now and then. I did it a few times on lives. Um, just for fun, but yeah, yeah, so we had some questions earlier. I don't know if these people are still here, uh, got some gifts for him and his baby, but now that I'm going to dump him, should I just keep them or what? So a, it's a gift, right? It's a gift. Do you still want to give the gift? Are you still feeling, you know, generous, you know, caring? It's completely up to you my love this is like like gifts are something that you give with an open heart it's something you give without expectation of return so do you want to do you feel like he owes you you know so much that you don't want to give anymore um or you know do you feel generous towards them it's completely up to you that line matters but that line has to be there it can't be undefined yes 
Yes, indeed. Good morning. Uh, do, 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 do. Samaj so just began reading custom made. Love it. My ex is my ex because he couldn't. Really? <laughs> Hi, Asnes. Uh, my ex is my ex because he could make a clear line with female friends. He left it ambiguous. Yes. Yeah, you can't do that. Uh, I don't want him to have something to think about me or from, so don't give it. Don't give it. Uh, you've. I'm trying to fix my mommy issues for Meryl Streep. <laughs> what? What? Uh, working on trying to fix the errors to shut down when upset. Um, it's okay, right? It's okay to go quiet. It's okay to go inside your head. It's okay to go think about things. It's okay to deal with your emotions. So listen, when I started using everything that's in fix that shit and I started thinking before behaving, then I, it looked like I would shut down, right? Because I would go quiet. And sometimes my husband would notice and he'd say, baby, are you okay? And I'd say, I'm okay, baby. I'm just working through things in my head. If there's something I need to talk to you about, I will. So, um, get fixed that shit so that you really understand how to do that process. Uh, thinking and taking time to cool off is better than blowing up. A hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, so, like I said, if your partner notices that you've gone inside yourself to work through what's going on, to find a solution instead of vomiting, to find out how you're going to be the solution instead of looking to them and saying, be the solution to my problems. If they notice and they say, are you okay? You, if they're nearby, touch them, put your hand on them and say, it's okay, baby. I'm just working through something in my head. If I need to talk to you about it, I will. Do, 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 do. Is this that person? Yeah. So just so you know, um, Sarah, if, if I get bored of you or if I feel like you're trolling, I'll just block you. It's that easy. Uh, this is a place where we get constructive, not stupid. Right? Just so you know, if you're here to learn, come learn. But if you're here to, you know, just be trolly, then we do take you out. Uh, we don't hesitate. We don't hesitate. We keep, we, we keep it good. We keep it quality. First time on here, I'm worried about my marriage right now. Okay. Um, so here's the thing about uh, relationships. If things start to slide, that is the time to get coaching. Um, at the very least, get fixed that shit, start doing what's in that book. But you don't want it to get to the point where it's dead before you come and get help. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier to find out what you need to start doing to bring it back than to try to resuscitate something long after you should have started doing the right things. I just moved to an old city. I met with this. I met with this male friend from seven years ago. Realizing, you started developing feelings. Uh, have the conversation. Like, like, don't get feelings and have feelings and have feelings and have feelings, and then try to have a conversation about what it is that they want. Right. Come right out and say, Have you thought about getting into a relationship anytime soon? And see what they say about even being in a relationship. Because some people just don't want to get into a relationship right now. They're just not ready, which means you need to pull yourself back in. Detach, right? Don't be attached to somebody who doesn't want a relationship and miss opportunities with people who do want relationships. Yeah. 
if you can't be normal around him, like I don't want anything right now, but I can't be normal around him, maybe you should just pull back and not spend as much time with that person. Uh, how to fix irrational fear? Boyfriend secretly prefers my sis. I love them. I don't know if it's paranoid or insecurity. I would suggest you come get a coaching session to try and sort that out. My ex broke up with me and found someone new the same week. What does that mean? It means you are looking in the wrong direction. Why are you watching your ex? Why aren't you keeping your your eye on the road for your life instead of watching what he's doing in his and having some kind of feeling about that? Um, it's your ego that's being injured by this, by the way. Your ego says, why wouldn't you want me, right? But this ego you know, cycle that you're going through is keeping you from focusing on who is going to be a good partner for you. So what you really do need to do is grab no more assholes. You, you need to use that first section in the book to get over the heartache, to use anger to fuel you, fuel you forward every time you find yourself reminiscing or missing him or feelings about him. And really start focusing on getting into your next relationship, defining your next relationship, being open to that person. Thank you for the rose. Oh, my friend won the Insta giveaway and messaged me at fam when she saw it and was freaking out. That's so cute. Uh, Asma says, maybe I'm just not his person. Married for, oh, like I'm married for eight years. Uh, if you want help with that, that would be a coaching session. Boyfriend removed pics of us to be professional for work, but has pics of friends and family. I'm upset and hurt. Of course. So ask him, what's the difference between me and your friends and family? Like, ask him that. That's the question. What's the difference between uh, pictures of us and pictures of your friends and family? Because I'm, I'm really curious. Should I be actively dating on apps or wait until I randomly meet someone? Both. Both, why choose? Why can't you do both? Thank you. It does make more sense to not see him for now. I just hope he doesn't take it wrong. Um, you, you could be honest, right? You could be honest. Single for 10 years, flings here and there. I feel ready, but struggling with dating, flirting, which book? No more assholes. No more assholes, my love. That's the one. Uh, is there anybody here who wants a notification when I go live, by the way? Who wants a notification when I go live? Uh, we never know. We never know what's going to happen. But always learning opportunities that I can pretty much guarantee. Uh, so, you know, you will see me answer some common questions. Um, but uh, again, it's always a mixed bag on here. Uh, definitely need a coaching session. Um, so for those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. If you feel like you want to get a coaching session to gain some clarity on a situation that you're going through to understand what you should be doing next, guys, coaching means coaching. Um, I don't, I don't let you walk away without homework, without knowing what you should be doing. Um, this is behaviorism. This is social sciences, sociology, psychology, anthropology, biology. I help you understand what's happening, but then coaching. I help you understand what you need to do to have a better outcome for yourself. So if you do want to get coaching, hit the coaching button in the link to my bio. Follow the three steps to book yourself in. So uh, are your books on audio? Uh, Fix That Shit is now an audio book. You can only get it through the link tree in my bio. Uh, of course I advocate for men, of course, 100%. Uh, my regulars, my people, those of you who have been following me for a while and know what I say, do I advocate for men? By the way, good morning. Thank you, lovely. Uh, so um, so somebody said, what time are you, do you normally get on? And, and somebody answered, there is no normal time. And that's because I'm loosey-goosey. I love this. Absolutely, of course. Yes, you do. Thank you, my loves. 
uh, I am loosey goosey with the times that I get on, but I will be starting, like I'm getting a better internet connection in August, sometime in August, and I will be starting a membership platform. And uh, on the membership platform, I will have set times. So I'm still gonna be loosey goosey uh, on the live streams, uh, you know, uh, on Insta or TikTok. I just do TikTok right now. Um, so I'll be showing up loosey goosey on the free live streams, but on the paid platform, you will have scheduled times that you can come catch me live. I certainly don't hate men. I love men. I don't hate guys either, uh, you know, so, Guys, men, this is mindsets that I talk about. Guys are selfish short-term thinkers. Men are generous long-term thinkers. Girls are selfish short-term thinkers. Women are generous long-term thinkers. I don't have anything against the mindset of selfish short-term thinking. I've been there. I took a full year of being a girl after leaving a three-year abusive relationship and not wanting anything, but I was like 20, 21. I wasn't gonna stay home, you know. Oh, I don't, I don't. I don't want a relationship, so I'm staying home. No, motherfucker. I went to bars. I picked up. I picked up. I picked up guys. Picked up guys. Brought them home. Had some fun. Right. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being in girl mode. There's nothing wrong with being in guy mode. When you want a relationship, you are in woman mode. You are in man mode. So you got to find the person who shares your mindset wherever you are at. Right. Don't be in girl mode and play with somebody in man mode and break their heart because you didn't want a relationship. I'm supposed to, she advocates for everyone and she'll tell you straight up if you're wrong or not, right? I don't care if you're a man or a woman. Yeah. Uh, I love this. I'm supposed to go on a first date tonight. He's making it hard, has something to say about everything. So follow your gut, my love. If you don't think you're going to enjoy his company, then do shut it down. Me and my boyfriend talk rarely because of work sleeps sometimes we don't talk for five or seven hours um it's okay my love you need to fill up your time too it's okay um right but sometimes we don't talk for five or seven hours it's okay i just called him to hear him and he said he was out with his friends it's okay it's okay for us to have balance um it's okay for us to have for us to have a life outside with the relationship this constant need like like seven hours goes by and i haven't heard from him and that puts me in a state that's not healthy you need have need to have more independence you need to allow him to be an individual uh i do suggest you grab two books fix that shit to help you ease your anxiety and uh custom made to help you understand how to practice a um, a, a purpose outside of your relationship because you're making your partner your purpose. Um, so understand how to practice your purpose outside your relationship if you don't know what that is yet. This book is going to help you uncover what your purpose is and it's also going to teach you how to monetize your purpose. Uh, he wants to pick me up and take me to a park. I want something more public but he won't compromise. No shut this down now today like today immediately text him today and like now text him now and say uh i i really hate to do this last minute i understand you had this expectation that we were going to see each other um and and i'm sorry if this might be disappointing but i really have been doing some thinking and i don't feel this is the right situation for me I wish you all the best, but I need to leave this here. Goodbye. Don't, don't. You have a bad feeling and with reason. This is somebody who's controlling. This is somebody who wants to impose their will on you. This is somebody who doesn't care how you feel. It's about them and what they want and how they want it and when they want it. Don't. This is not respect in any way, shape, or form. Don't. See, this is what I mean. That guy wants to take her to a park and a park, a park is a public area. Uh, there's a trail up the road, right? Like she wants to be somewhere more public. 
he's talking about taking her somewhere less public, right? Did you read her message? Like you're saying, oh, a park is a public place. Do you know what park it is? Do you know how many people are there? I mean, she lives in that area. She has an idea of how how occupied the place he wants to take her at is. She's not comfortable with that. She's suggesting a place she's more comfortable with and he's saying no. So that right there lets you know what he cares more about, what he wants to do versus what she wants to do. How she feels doesn't matter. What do you mean? So maybe he's trying to compromise. He said, no, she said, I want to go there. And he said, no, he's not. Like, did you read what she said? You're literally um, negating everything that she has said so far. Are you actually reading what she's saying? Because the words you're typing are the opposite of what she is saying. I need to get to the leaving, but it's so hard to make the jump. You just do it. You don't wait for it to get easy, my love. You do it. Uh, this is all you. I can't with her. <laughs> Does physical chemistry grow? Yeah. Or do we need it? From the start, nope, I don't feel physically attached. Um, unless I knew the person and had met them on social settings beforehand, right? Uh, oh no, attack me because I don't understand. So, so now you're gonna go into victim mode. Now you're gonna get all defensive and go into victim mode because I'm pointing out that what you're saying is opposite from what she stated. Right? So now instead of acknowledging like, oh, maybe I didn't understand her, now you're just gonna go into into victim and defensiveness instead of uh, taking responsibility for what you said, for your, you know, and I don't know if you misinterpreted it on purpose or by accident, but you're not taking responsibility for your lack of understanding of, of what she wrote. <clears throat> Uh, I have a park right beside where I live. He wants to go to a park far away. Not comfortable. Um, oh, so so very, you know, listen, <laughs> I'm not gaslighting anybody when I say you didn't read what the person said and said something opposite to that. That's not gaslighting in any way, shape, or form. Gaslighting is making you feel crazy about the truth. You're not stating the truth here. You're, you're ignoring the truth. So that's not gaslighting when I point out that you were ignoring the truth and saying something opposite to that. And if you if you wanna start meditating, oh, anybody who wants to start meditating, uh, there's a free meditation guide in the link tree in my bio. This takes you to a page that's a starter page for meditation. Uh, there's a starter video, there's a starter track, there's a guide you can download, there's a minute tracker that uh, you can print out as well and start tracking your minutes, making sure that you're hitting your weekly, uh, your weekly minimum to really effectively shrink your amygdala, which reduces your fight or flight, which is, reduces stress, fear, and anxiety. Uh, a cafe is a much safer place for a date, which is what she would prefer for safety. So here's the thing, I don't recommend cafes um, because when you sit in a coffee shop, it's an interview. You are interviewing each other and that's uncomfortable, right? Who, who here hasn't shown up for an interview without a level of anxiety? But if he, and so, you know, you're just gonna sit there and anxiously interview each other. Instead, go to the cafe, grab a beverage to go, and then go for a walk. So rather than this, which is imposing, you do this, which is more comfortable. Huh. 
Oh, Tyler. Seriously, you just came here to vomit, my friend. As you just came here to vomit. You just came here to really vomit, and, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why, but uh, you're kind of boring. Is it normal to be afraid to have a relationship? If your experience has been negative in the past, then yes. I'm a respectful regular. I prefer to stay. You're fine, Seth. You're fine, Seth. I'm starting to feel ready to try dating. Do you think going for a walk is the best way to meet up? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what ways can you recommend for communicating with a boyfriend that doesn't care about my feelings? First of all, why do you have a boyfriend that doesn't care about your feelings? Um, and are you sure he doesn't care about your feelings? Or is it that you're not being any kind of a solution to your own feelings and all you do is vomit your feelings and say, here you go, fix this, right? Is is that what you're doing? Um, and now he's tired of that. He's like, hey, and, and I'm paraphrasing, but he's saying, I'm not here to be a therapist. I came into this relationship to be a partner, but I didn't come into this relationship to be a therapist. I also didn't come into this relationship to fix all of your problems. If you have some feelings that you need to deal with, you need to be your solution, which by the way, we do. We are responsible for our feelings. We are responsible for our behaviors and the behaviors that we choose to do to effectively deal with our own feelings. So if you were not doing that, if you were not being a solution to your problems, but always going to your partner going, there you go, fix it. Um, that's not fair. That's not fair. That's not a partnership. So what you do need to do is grab fix that shit and do what's in that book. But here's the thing. What is in this book will not work if you're with a selfish short-term thinker. So if you're not sure if you're with a selfish short-term thinker, then you can grab no more assholes. There are 12 character traits you need to grade his paper on and see if he gets at least a nine out of 12. If not, he definitely is a selfish short-term thinker and you need to leave this relationship. I know it's her life and her decision to make. As a friend, is there a polite way I can talk to her? Um, so exactly that, right? Like you start that off saying, look, I know this is your life. I know this is your decision to make. Um, I've been noticing that you're not happy and I feel you would do better if you, de if you did these changes, right? Whether it's changing their behavior or it's changing the person that they're with. Boy, I've come a long way. I love it. Can I buy your books in a bookstore? I want a hard copy, but I don't want to wait for shipping. Um, unfortunately, most bookstores, you can order my books, um, but uh, they're not on the shelves. Sorry, you guys. Sorry, you guys. Boyfriend cheated, cheated on me. He's been trying to fix it for the past two months. Suggest couples therapy. What should I do? Come do coaching. Come do coaching with me. Uh, my friend's ex want all his gifts returned from her. Uh, you can't. A gift is something you give. Uh, so listen, if it was on loan, then you state that. You say, hey, you can have this for as long as we stay together. But when you give something, it is a gift. The only thing that you give that you get to get back if you break up is an engagement ring. If you do not get married and you have given an engagement ring and then you break up, the engagement ring goes back to you because the ring is a promise to get married. If you do not get married, you get the ring back. I used to be so codependent. I would say, fix this, make me feel better. Not anymore, my love, because you know, you've been following me. You've been following me. Sometimes he chooses his friends over me and it annoys me so much I don't understand. Sometimes, that's called balance. That's called balance. Now, I don't know in, in what situations, but it's not healthy to get in a relationship and say, you must always 
choose to, to fill your spare time with me. If you fill your spare time with anything but me, I will be upset. Not healthy at all, my love. That is codependent. Um, you need to get fix that shit and custom made. Fix that shit to help you understand how to relationship properly. Custom made to help you fill your time up. Because if you're making your partner your purpose, it's because you're not focusing on your purpose. And if you're not focusing on your purpose, maybe it's because you don't know what it is yet. So custom made teaches you to understand what your purpose is and how to monetize it. Is it normal for my husband to always want to involve his family in everything I want to do? This is your husband. Like this behavior was here before you two got married. Um, so I don't, I, right? Like this is what you married into. Uh, normal or not, this is his normal. And this, this is what you married. Uh, this is what you said I accept when you married this person. Uh, and now you're not liking it. So, mm, what do you need to do, love? What do you need to do? If you need some clarity, perspective on that, come get a coaching session. How do you relax your thoughts from going crazy even when your boyfriend is doing everything right? Come take my No More Insecurity program. This is meant to deprogram overthinking, fear, insecurity, jealousy. Um, if, if, you, if you need to get your thoughts changed so that your emotions change, uh, come take my No More Insecurity program. It educates you on your emotions, gives you the tools you need to manage your emotions and behaviors, also helps you address your particular triggers. So coaching sessions, it depends what you choose. If you guys want to get coaching sessions, uh, go to my bio, click on the link tree, link tree click the coaching button, um, take a look at that page and see if it's right for you. I'm finally said I'm done with my husband. I'm so tired of the verbal abuse. I can't no more, we tried. Are you leaving? Are you leaving? Let us know when you're leaving. Words don't matter, behaviors do. So when you're leaving, come get your freedom bow. I asked my ex to stop reaching out and give me time to be able to be his friend. How do I get over him? Come Back Queen is the book that helps you get over your lost relationship. Yes, what do you think about uh, Life 360 on each other? Boyfriend and girlfriends that have Life 360 on each other? Is that, I don't, I'm not quite sure what that is. He said, he's page 94 and fix that shit. Explain a little bit more about the last paragraph. <laughs> For real? Uh, he said he's not hiding me and that he would still post me on his IG stories. Okay. But ask him, what's the difference between me and friends and family? Um, like say, okay, that's, you know, that, that, that soothes me, that reassures me. But I'm still curious, what's the difference between me and your friends and family? Oh, like, like, through, well, if people choose to do that, like this, like, if you do that because you're coerced into it, if you do something like that, like, you know, having uh, having a tracker on your phone, right? Knowing each other's location, that kind of thing. Um, if you do that because you choose to and, and both of you are fine with this, there's nothing wrong with it. If you do it because your partner um, coerces you into that, makes you feel like you have to, that's not okay. That is absolutely not okay. How do I know when the relationship is over? His actions don't match his words. That's a good sign right there. I don't trust you. I don't have faith in you. Um, you know, listen, like I just don't believe you anymore. So that's that's a good reason. I still think and dream about her. I know she moved on, but it still hurts from seven months ago. Um, so what I suggest for you is the perfect play. So this is the book for men on how to get into their next relationship and make sure that it's a woman, not a girl. So generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker. But I start with first things first. First things first addresses how to get over your last relationship. So the perfect play will be the book for you. Um, simp, <laughs> if, you, if you want some help with getting over that um, and or you can come get coaching, it's up to you. But um, if you want, to understand how to get over your last relationship and start moving towards your next one. It's in this book. 
Do you think people can change after you told them multiple times to change? Verbal abuse? You don't stay for verbal abuse. You don't play the hoping game. You don't hope they're going to change. So anything is possible, but you don't wait for possibility. <clears throat> Page 94 and fix that shit. Interesting. Do, 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 do. Oh, look at that. I just opened it randomly and it was right there. Understand that looking and considering isn't cheating. It's a function of our species and it can pass without complication if you choose. We are not monogamous by nature. Mother Nature didn't design us as monogamous animals. We are animals. We are uh, mammals, right? So only but 5% of mammals are monogamous by nature. Um, beavers are voles. Well, voles, aren't they? Are they rodents? Or are they mammals? Um, right so there are some there are there are some animals in the animal world that are monogamous by nature beavers swans voles lobsters um we are not animals that are monogamous by nature don't notice how attractive other animals are they are full in we have celebrity crushes so we are not monogamous by nature. We are monogamous by culture. We are monogamous by choice. Uh, we do as a species pair bond. It is natural for us to have an infatuation with each other. Uh, in the infatuation mode, there is a vetting process that should take place. Like if you dial away the culture that we're in, right? If you strip away the culture and you bring us straight to the animal that we are. The way we function is to come together and pair bond, procreate, make a baby, raise it together with the help of the tribe, and after seven years, seek out a different mate to make the next baby. Why? Because we are biological creatures designed to procreate and survive and continue the species. Why would we seek a different mate? Because after seven years, the body is older. And so males would look for a more fertile female. Females would look for a more capable male. So it's natural for biological creatures designed to procreate to always want to choose the best opportunity when procreation time comes around. I found someone who makes me happy. He said, I love you first. Is it okay to want to say back? 100%. Yeah. That's the seven year itch, my love. Yes. Yeah. A boyfriend is way more not very affectionate unless I'm acting distant. What should I do? Get your two kisses in every day. Two kisses in minimum five seconds each. Also do a love language quiz so that the two of you better understand each other and you can see where physical affection is on each other's scale. My girlfriend is sweet, but she won't say thank you when I do certain things for, it, for her. How do I address this? Um, get her fix that shit. Uh, my boyfriend is not very affectionate unless I act distant. I'm not really affectionate yet. So that's your advice, love. Went on vacation and he posted about it, but didn't include any pics we took together. Should I feel upset? Ask him why. Ask him why. Instead of just defaulting to being upset about things, get the why. Say, hey, I noticed that we went on vacation, and but you didn't post any pictures of us together. I was kind of wondering why. Uh, what are situationships and how to get out of them? Situationships is where you are in a friends with benefits relationship with somebody but not a committed relationship the way you get out is you say this isn't working for me i need to be available for a relationship because that's what i want how 
How do I become more open with calling my significant other names, like pet names? It's just so hard for me sometimes. If, if you guys, if there's something you want to do, you just do it, right? You just do it. You don't wait. Like, I want to do this. Oh, it feels weird. But you want to do it, so you do it. The more you do something, the less weird it is. My boyfriend wants to go on a boys trip. I don't want him to because his friends aren't the greatest. So you're going to parent? You're going to parent your partner. Not a good idea, my love. Don't get in a relationship with a parent-child dynamic. Um, my husband can go do whatever he wants to do. He can go do whatever he wants to do. I'm not his parent. Uh, I am not his parent. If my husband were to do something that to me is disagreeable, like flirting with other women, cheating on me, I would make my own decisions. I would say, this isn't for me. I don't want to stay in this relationship anymore. But don't get in a relationship and then parent your partner in order to tuck them into a box that makes you feel comfortable. If your partner does things that you don't like, you are in the wrong relationship or you are micromanaging your partner. I don't know which one it is in your case. Uh, if you want me to actually help you, I do need more information. You do need to get a coaching session because you are asking me to help in a particular situation. You're not asking a general uh, question about human nature. Do you think I can get comeback queen from my still married sister who's having uh, a generally hard time? Uh, if she's having a hard time in her relationship, I like, is he a selfish short-term thinker? Is that it? Because Comeback Queen is the breakup book. This is a book that helps you get over a breakup. All I can think about is how I messed up and should have just blocked guys from messaging me. Mm. Well, uh, knowledge is power. When you know better, you do better. I went on a date a week ago and he said he was interested in seeing me again, but hasn't put forth any effort to see me again. Should I just give up? Did you, did you make any effort? Did you propose anything? Um, did you say, hey, I'm doing this, you should come. My boyfriend broke up with me because he saw guys in my DMs, but I wasn't being disrespectful. Uh, so goodbye, all right, goodbye, goodbye. Um, like if you know you look at me having platonic conversations and that bothers you i don't need to be in a relationship with somebody who is um controlling right uh can you be more specific with micromanaging micromanaging means controlling other people's behaviors uh, give me a second, guys. Maggie wants to come in. Thank you. I put forth effort. He said he wanted to see me this weekend, but that was almost a week ago. So here's the thing about dating, you guys. Um, you, uh, you don't want to just be talking to one person at a time. You do want to use a no kissing for three months dating rule. You do want to let people show you who they are. You don't want to be tied to somebody before you know who they are and know their consistency and know their character. Um, and anybody who doesn't step up and, and be interesting enough or be interested enough, you simply let them go and you go, no problem. No problem. Uh, advice on an ex not being able to let go of me. I'm trying to move on. I feel bad for him. So it, this is not your responsibility, right? It is not your responsibility to cradle somebody 
um, they need to deal with their emotions, they need to deal with their behaviors, you know, not being able to let go of me. What, what does that mean? Does that mean they keep reaching out? Does that mean they keep interrupting your day? Does that mean they keep trying to pull you back? Uh, you want to move on. And so you get to move on. You get to say, I need you to stop texting me. I need you to stop calling me. You get to say that. It's true. He's so manipulative and he keeps reaching out and calling me. Shut it down. Shut it down in no uncertain terms. You, need, you Say it. Say it. So he hears the firmness in your voice. You need to stop texting me. You need to stop calling me. If you don't, I will block you. Can you talk about anxiety in a relationship? So the book that helps you deal with anxiety in a relationship is Fix That Shit. It does help you understand how to deal with your own emotions. My ex keeps messing up then coming back months later with promises of change. I want it to work. Don't take them back unless there is change. Um, you know, this sounds dysfunctional. Uh, it sounds very dysfunctional to tell you the truth because you, 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 you're in it for a pattern. So it's a pattern and you're accepting the pattern. Um, instead of elevating yourself, instead of rising up, instead of defining your next relationship and, and saying, no, the man you are is no longer the man I want to be with. If you want to be the person by my side, this is what I'm looking for. And you keep taking back somebody who, who hasn't shown you evident change. So you do need to get no more assholes. You do need to become more firm within yourself, have more courage, have more self-esteem and stand up for what you want and not slide backwards. Thank you. I do need to be more firm for sure. Yes. Uh, what if you're in a five-year relationship and don't know what to do? Then come get coaching. I recover from my anxiety and want to communicate that to my boyfriend. How to get another chance? Uh, you need to write a three-part apology. I'm sorry for all the behaviors, all of them. Leave them speechless that you could have done better. I realize that this is all the emotional outcome that he had as a result of your behaviors. Leave him speechless. Third part, this is my plan for not doing this again. How do I get coaching? So go to my bio, click on the link tree, click the coaching button, takes you to a page, read what's on that page, see if this is right for you. How do you know he's a one? He's loyal and devoted. He's hardworking. He practices the three Ps, which is protect, profess, provide. He passes the 12 character traits in No More Assholes, getting at least a nine out of 12. And he makes you laugh more than anybody else. How do I get my boyfriend to open up emotionally? You have to get fix that shit. You have to do what's in that book and create an environment in your relationship that feels emotionally safe. No kissing. That's right. No kissing for three months. Don't kiss somebody you don't know and hope for the best when you want a relationship. If you just want to hook up, kiss people you don't know and have fun. Um, but if you want a relationship, don't kiss someone you don't know and hope they're the relationship material you're looking for. It just doesn't make any sense. No sense at all. You waste so much time when you do that. Guys, don't give me puzzle pieces. Um, Oh, a guy lied about his name for three months, red flag. Yeah, and he has stalkers. Second red flag, dump him, goodbye. Conversation, shut down, done, done, done. <laughs> There's nothing my husband has done to get stalkers. Do you know why? Because he has integrity. My boyfriend is great, never gives me reasons to not trust him, but sometimes I find it hard to do. So I have a No More Insecurity program that you can sign up for. Um, it does teach you how to change your thoughts and emotion patterns um, and how to deal with the triggers that are happening for you in your case. 
Thank you. I'm ending it. Good, good, good. Yeah. My boyfriend is great and there. Oh, this keeps moving up on me. Stop. Oh, girl, I needed the slide. My boyfriend cheated and I'm wondering if I should send this stuff back. Yeah. So you don't even need to send it. You just need to like leave it somewhere for him to come and get. Uh, how do I find that No More Insecurities program? So there is the button to that in the link tree in my bio. How to communicate boundaries without coming off harsh. It's, it's, you just do it. Like you do it simply and you do it firmly and you stand by it and you say, this is what I need. Uh, nope. I've had stalker, just that I've had stalkers. Does that mean you imply I don't have integrity? Is it, 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 like, why? Right? Like, and listen, it's, you're allowing crazy people in your life. You're allowing crazy people in your life. Either you drove them crazy, um, and, and I'm not saying you, but there's multiple reasons why people have stalkers, but it, it is a red flag, right? It is a red flag. Um, for whatever reason, here I come with drama. Here I come with drama. So your reason as a female is probably angry males, right? Um, his reason as a male could be angry females. It could be he's an asshole and piss people off. Who knows? But do you want somebody who comes with drama, who uses a fake name and then says, oh, it's because I come with drama. Is that who you want to start a relationship with? That's the question here in this case, right? And we need to analyze that. We need to analyze that. Are you giving fake names? because you come with stalkers we are long distance so i would have to mail it so if he wants it say if i have this stuff here if you want it you can make arrangements to have it picked up And boyfriend, I want more space. He's thinking about breaking up, but I want space while staying together. So negotiate. Um, but here's the thing, like I, I want I want us to stay together, but I want us to have some space. What are you gonna do with that space? If you're simply asking for space, but you're not implying that there's any kind of learning that's gonna take place, that's gonna make your relationship better, then why not just break up? So if you're gonna negotiate for space but staying together, you also need to let him know how that space is gonna be beneficial because you are going to learn the tools to bring to the relationship to make it a better place. So you can get fix that shit to get that plan to do that negotiating. Uh, do you believe in soul connections like love at first sight? Anything and everything is possible. So I just realized it doesn't make sense. Why would giving out a fake name help when you have stalkers? Um, because he's not sure who's creating a fake name to come and communicate with him. So taking the time to like, you know, potentially make sure that uh, they do a deeper dive into the person they're talking with before revealing who they are, which also sounds like, holy crap, like you come with a lot of drama and not for me, not something I wanna start with. Or he's married or in a relationship, yeah. Yeah, and and like women, it's it's scarier for us, right? Like there is a difference between men and women and how they misbehave, right? Who here as a male is scared walking down the street at night? Who here as a female is scared walking down the street at night, right? So there is a difference. Yeah. 
How would you know what a man feels? You realize I do talk to men, right? And and they feel safe talking to me. And you realize I am a sociologist. So I study what happens in society. Um, so I hope that helped answer your question. Uh, sociology, psychology, anthropology, and biology are my, my fields of study. Ooh, so all men are the same. Guys, we got a vomiter. We got a vomiter. Uh, so all men are the same. At any point, um, ladies and gentlemen, people who follow me, at any point, have I ever said all men are the same? Good morning. Why would a stalker looking for him speak to someone under a different name in the first place? Catfishing. Two people fresh out of a relationship. Can this work if you come at it the right way? So if you're here to learn, if you're here to learn, you know, stay, learn. Uh, but if you're here to vomit, uh, it just it just gets boring really fast. I love this life. Which book would you recommend for newly single? Uh, no More Assholes. This is exactly the book you need so that you're not anxiously looking for a relationship. Uh, you understand the vetting process, how to get into the right relationship, what to look for, how to have a time and space boundary using a no kissing for three months dating rule so that you have time to understand somebody. It's no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers, which means you have space to think about your day. You can spend every single day together. You spend as much time with them as you want, but you stay within those three rules. No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers. No kissing doesn't mean no affection. But in today's culture, kissing is coerced. It's a fear and based action. I'm afraid I'm going to lose an opportunity. I don't know you yet, but I'm afraid I'm going to lose an opportunity to get to know you more if I don't kiss you. So it's a fear based action. Whereas uh, when, you know, it's no kissing, but affection is allowed. Affection is something you show because you feel warm and fuzzy. So if they incite you to feel warm and fuzzy because of their character, their personality, their consistency, their thoughtfulness, their generosity, their kindness, their sweetness, their sensitivity, then you start feeling affection, which is a more genuine way of getting physical with somebody. So it gives you an opportunity to create genuine affection before sexual intimacy. So genuine intimacy before sexual intimacy, instead of the other way around where you start using sexual intimacy, hoping to create genuine intimacy. Uh, I want to avoid being toxic and want to communicate without being scared. Do you have a book for that? Yes, my love. It is Fix That Shit. What's a good way to get over your ego when he chose someone else over you? Um, so come back, queen, my love. What do you think about testing a guy by seeing if they cheat with fake profiles? Um, nothing against that. Honestly, I have nothing against that. Uh, when it comes to accusing somebody of cheating, always get the proof before you even say anything about it. <laughs> Can you talk about rebuilding trust after betrayal? I'm the one who broke trust. So the only way that that is reestablished is through consistency. So... Um, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So the more time passes with the consistency of your changed behavior, the more this person can trust that you are in fact changed and they can begin trusting your character again. Um, guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. Who wants a notification when I go live? I do, I see your I do's. Uh, okay, my loves, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell right about here. Click the bell when you do that, say I just did. 
uh, don't give me puzzle pieces, you guys. I need a whole thought in one box because I can't, I can't put together fragments. Uh, what would you suggest I do in the first few days after a big fight over trust? Um, a three-part apology, right? I'm sorry for everything you could and should have done better. I realized that the emotional output this had on the person. This is my plan for not doing this again. Also grab fix that shit. Start setting a tone in the relationship that feels emotionally safe through your consistent use of functional behaviors. I got the proof. I caught him coming back from an out of town trip after I just had surgery. Yeah. I can never get past early dating stages. I'm anxious attached and they always seem to back away. If you need help with this, come get coaching. It's easier for me to tell you what to do next than it is for me to help you undo something you shouldn't have done. So if you are trying to date and be successful in dating and you keep hitting walls, um, because you're not choosing the right behaviors, then get the five session plus support package. What this is, is access to me in between coaching sessions to reach out and say, hey, I just, I, you know, send, send me screenshots. Hey, she just sent me this, what should I reply? Um, you know, this is where, how do I, how do I ask her to do something with me? What should I do right now? Right. Um, always easier for me to give you that next step and keep your momentum going, than help you undo something you shouldn't have done. Try to retrieve somebody that you've lost because you vomited the wrong behavior into your transactions. So if you're having trouble with dating and you need step by step by step, then get the five session plus support package. Him, you're welcome, love. Uh, how do I marry a mature woman like you? I have an answer for you. It's this book right here. This book right here is called The Perfect Play. It helps men get into relationships with women. Not, not me, specifically, because I got my man, but uh, a woman like me. This is, this is how you're going to find a woman like me. Uh, where is your audio version of Fix That Shit? It's in the link tree in my bio. Uh, I put the bell on for the live notifications and I rarely get my phone beeping to tell me. So do go into your settings on TikTok, turn on your notifications there. Um, also go into your settings on your phone and turn on your notifications. My boyfriend is always late to our plans even after when I told him that's upsetting. So always, right? Um, that means that he's in a different time zone. I don't do insurance, my love, I'm sorry. You can try and negotiate with your insurance company and see if they would cover it, but I don't have the PhD, which is what they tend to look for. Uh, so if your partner happens to be in a different time zone, for instance, my friend Melissa, Melissa is plus an hour. So Melissa time is the regular time plus one hour. My friend Dan, Dan time is plus one hour. So I always take into account my friend's time zones. My husband is plus 10 minutes. I take that into account when I tell him when he needs to be ready, when we are leaving for something. So when you are planning something with your partner, give them the time that includes their time zone. If you need to leave at noon, tell him we need to leave at 11. Uh, Chantal can help you with relationship insurance. I can. I can't really oh heart insurance I definitely can my boyfriend is affectionate but not really tender if that makes sense uh, so you know when we get into a relationship we accept the people we get into a relationship with because we should have chosen somebody who suits us um, I'm getting your book as a birthday gift to myself that's so cute uh, so here's the thing, um, you, you don't have to like everything. Not everything needs to be perfect. If you weigh the good and you weigh what you wish you had, um, you know, does this outweigh like, like, can you accept this because this is so much better or not? Um, right. That's so, and, and again, like, 
you know, we, we had some people yesterday, so he was tender mush in the beginning. Of course, it's called the courtship phase. You did not PMS in the beginning, right? There are differences in the courtship phase. Then we go into the reality phase. Um, when you are, you know, getting to know somebody, you should be using a no kissing for three months dating rule and having all these conversations and finding out who the other person is. Um, you know, how affectionate do you tend to be is a question that you should be asking if you are a mushy gushy affectionate person and you love affection, you should be doing a love language quiz before you kiss the person. So you can see where physical affection rates on their love language quiz versus where it rates on yours. So you can see where compatibilities or differences lie. You should always be aware of your compatibilities and differences before you kiss and get into a relationship with somebody. So here you are in this relationship. What will you do? Are you able to accept this person for who they are? Or do you need to exit this relationship to get into one with somebody who suits you better? Um, and by the way, affection isn't something you need to sit back and wait to have happen. Make sure you get in two kisses a day, minimum five seconds each with your partner to keep that intimacy alive in your relationship. You want mushy gushy affection? Give mushy gushy affection. So, you know, it, like you, you can you can create what you want instead of instead of testing your partner. I'm going to sit back. I'm going to see if they're going to give me what it is I need. I'm going to see if they ask me how my day was and then get poopy if they don't. I'm going to see if they come to me, give me a kiss and then get poopy if they don't. You set your partner up to fail when you create tests for them. Don't test them. Accept them. Love them. Give them what you want. But don't make your gifts, don't make your giving a manipulation. If you give it to get it, that's manipulation. If you give it because you want to, that's a gift. Do it even if he does. Oh, do you want to be affectionate? Go be affectionate. I, I don't wait for my husband to come cuddle me. I don't wait for him to come kiss me. I just, I go maul him. I don't wait for Charlie to come give me affection. I go maul him. I maul the motherfuckers. I maul the people in my life because I love them. And and I, I, don't, I don't set up little tests and say, if they love me, they're going to call. If they love me, they're going to text. If they love me, they're going to they're gonna hug me first, right? I, I just am. I am myself. And I let people accept me as who I am. Um, <clears throat> and if they have any problem with something, if they feel I'm too much in any way, shape, or form, then they should tell me because that's what friendship is, is communication. Um, you can say, when you're, par when you're affectionate with your partner, you say, I love it when we're mushy-gushy with each other. Mwah, 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 and just maul him. And let him know how much you appreciate these moments. I feel like I'll stay single forever if I don't kiss someone for three months. Why? That's the question. Why? Where did this come from? Did it like, like who told you this? Who told you if you don't kiss within three months, you lose the opportunity to get into a relationship. If you don't kiss in three months, nobody's going to want to be with you. Where did this come from? Let me tell you what it is. It's brainwashing. It's a cultural societal brainwashing and it needs to be undone because this brainwashing doesn't benefit people at all you know like like the current dating trend is kiss a stranger and hope for the best all right not get to know somebody you find out if they suit you and share your goals and timelines and make you laugh more than anybody else and respect you and have integrity and devotion don't do that no 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 that's dangerous You'll be single forever if you try to do that. Does that actually make sense to you? I'm struggling to find someone I think I'm really picky. Use no more assholes. Reinforce good behavior always, always. Uh, broke up with someone, didn't validate his feelings or give him space. Is it fixable? How do I win him back? That would be a coaching session, my love. No, three months before I kiss, literally a kiss. There, so everybody's lips secretes a chemical that doesn't do anything to them until it comes in contact with another set of lips. Sometimes I say kiss and people think I mean sex. No, I mean kiss. Um, so everybody's lips secretes a chemical that doesn't do anything to them until it comes in contact with another set of lips. That chemical combination is phenylethylamine. 
This is an aphrodisiac, an amphetamine, and an antidepressant. It fools you into thinking something about a person you don't know. When you introduce this chemical before you know them, you start thinking they're amazing. Oh my God, like I feel good. Therefore, I, you know, like, like you think you feel good because you know them. You don't. You don't know them long enough to know them. You feel good because you took heroin. It's that simple. It's, it's super simple. Uh, lovey-dovey in front of his sisters uh, which is best for you coming out of a relationship and now only wanting to focus on myself long term uh, say yes to goodness after three months of no kissing I don't want to find out that the person doesn't like to kiss so you have the conversations this is this is what you're supposed to do during those three months I do think you're just what's important to them you need to let them know what's important to you. I cannot. So you can't not kiss for three months. That's okay. Do you? And listen, I'm not, I'm not, this is free advice, right? This is free advice. You do with it what you want. Um, even people who pay for, for my time, people who come get coaching, do what you want. Uh, I'm not here to force you to do or not do anything. Um, but if you're going to not kiss for three months and then come here and complain about the person that you're with, I'm going to be like, motherfucker, guess what you did wrong? Guess what you did wrong? You got in a relationship with a stranger and you played the hoping game. You hoped, you hoped they were going to be the partner you're, you're looking for instead of using knowledge, right? Knowledge is power. You disempower yourself when you say, I refuse to use knowledge to choose my next partner. That's the choice you make. And we all have the right to make our own choices for good or bad, right? You, you have the right to make all the mistakes you want to make. But if you're going to start a relationship with a stranger and then be unhappy, it's not them that was the problem. It was the choice you made. What's a good book for dating basic and even attracting the right guy? No more assholes, my love. The right man. The right man. You want the right man. Is it salvageable if I already slept with him and now I found your program? Uh, I don't know who he is. I would suggest you get No More Assholes and start uh, engaging him on the 12 character traits to see uh, to see if this is a generous long-term thinker or a selfish short-term thinker. Today is my second year with my boyfriend. I'm very happy. I love that. Congratulations, lovely. Uh, is it wrong to ask for more effort when you feel you do more? It depends. It depends. Uh, sometimes people say that um, I'm not getting enough effort, but they're not actually seeing what their partner is doing. So I would suggest you grab fix that shit if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. If you apply what's in this book, you do tend to get more from your partner because they are grateful for you. My partner says our lack of intimacy for weeks at a time is from depression. Any advice? Um, so depression, anxiety does lower libido. Uh, fatigue also lowers libido. So uh, what you can do is encourage him to deal with his mental health. If he refuses to do anything about his mental health, this is not the right relationship for you. So grab a piece of paper and a pen. I'm going to tell you how he can address his mental health and get himself through his depression. Let me know when you're ready, when you got that pen and paper. Dun, dun. What should you do when your ex blocked you everywhere and you still love them? Uh, you come and get coaching with me because it sounds like you need some help with what's going on in your head. 
um, I would suggest you grab No More Assholes and learn how to start managing your own emotions. Are your books on Audible? So Fix That Shit is an audiobook, but you can only get it through the link tree in my bio. Not on Audible because Audible wants 70% of each sale. Can you talk about what a healthy masculine man is? Actually, I do in No More Assholes using the 12 character traits. Um, so obviously somebody who is confident, not controlling. A, a healthy relationship has freedom. So you want to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't try to micromanage or parent or control you in any way, shape or form. Um, and somebody who is responsible. So financially responsible, responsible for what he needs to be responsible for. Somebody who is hardworking, loyal, dedicated. Um, but do read No More Assholes. You do need what is in that book, my love, if you don't know. <laughs> needed to hear your voice before going to work and see my toxic ex who works there too this is why i say never date people you work with never 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 my love that sucks why why what if the girl says why don't you ever kiss me what do i say when you're dating um be before they get to a point where they're wondering why you're not kissing you need to have a conversation where you say um like basically you lay out your intent right this is my goal a committed long-term relationship this is my plan for reaching that goal using a no kissing for three months dating rule you need to communicate this before they move in for a kiss or before they wonder why you're not kissing them you need to read this my love the perfect play you need to read this book in order to date effectively and understand how to have those conversations why you're having those conversations wow wow so true i keep attracting unhealthy masculine males no more no more that's right uh, now that i'm moving out she says she understands and wants me to stay so it sounds like a coaching session if you want some help with this Uh, are your books at B. Dalton Bookstores? They could probably order my books in, but your best bet, your fastest way of getting them is probably going through Amazon. When is it a good time to bring up an issue? You need to refix that shit, start doing what's in that book before you start bringing up issues. There was so many things I used to bring up that I stopped talking about once I started doing what's in Fix That Shit because they were unnecessary. So just because you say you have an issue, I'm as a coach, I'm not going to automatically assume you are right because perception is not always reality. So if you need to understand when and how to bring up an issue, you need to start with fix that shit or you need to start with coaching. Uh, what do you think is a good book, uh, a good first book of yours to read? If you're single, no more assholes. If you're in a relationship, fix that shit. Guys, do you guys want me to do a book walkthrough? So for those of you who are new, where my newbies at? I wrote nine books on dating, relationships, and life. Uh, do you guys want me to do a brief description of each of your books? Uh, your books. <laughs> they will be yours one day. Um, each of my books. Uh, so, um, uh, what was I going to say? Yes, yes, yes. Look at all the yeses. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's do this. You guys are so excited. I love it. Uh, okay, so Comeback Queen is a book that helps you get over a breakup. Um, it doesn't matter how long ago it was, if you're still hurting, if you're still hung up on them, we come back queen. Um, then you're going to be ready for No More Assholes. This is a book that helps you, you like get aligned with getting into your next relationship. Choose your next partner carefully. Uh, make sure you get in a relationship with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, not a selfish short-term thinker who uses you. Men, I have your version of this. It's called The Perfect Play. Look at this, you guys. Look at this. She holds the heart and he's got the space for it. Isn't that amazing? Um, so The Perfect Play is going to help my men's get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinking woman no more assholes have women get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinking man 
Uh, so the relationship books, the how-to relationship books, with the exception of the perfect play, are written from like me to women. Perfect play is from me to the men. Uh, Dating 101 is me to anybody. So this is great for teenagers. Um, no swearing in this book, by the way. Can't say that about any of my others. So uh, Dating 101 is understanding the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. Why is long-term thinking the goal? If you want a long-term relationship, you want to get in a relationship with somebody who is a generous long-term thinker. Uh, if you want a relationship and you get in a relationship with a selfish short-term thinker, do you think you'll be happy? Or do you think you'll be better off with a generous long-term thinker? Uh, so once you get into your relationship, you guys, then you're going to move on to after the first kiss. Ladies, this is the book that helps you understand how to transition from courtship phase to reality phase. You're going to become an emotional leader here. Uh, if there's any fighting in your relationship, then fix that shit as the fighting out of your relationship. You can get to zero fighting in your relationship if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you and you do what's in this book. Um, I teach you how to manage your emotions, how to bring up sticky subjects, uh, how to understand your partner better, be better understood by your partner. Custom made is good for my codependence. This is the book that helps you have a purpose outside of your relationship so your life becomes balanced. I also teach you how to turn your purpose into a money-making machine, which means you start getting paid doing what you love. Super bonus in here. Uh, this is a workbook, by the way. Every chapter ends with exercises. You will be doing a lot of self-discovery in this book. Fake love need not apply. How to avoid posers, losers, scammers, and predators. This is a free book in the link to my bio, so you guys can go download that if you want. Say Yes to Goodness is a book about life. This is for me to everybody again. Uh, Dating 101, Custom Made, Say Yes to Goodness. This is me to whoever's reading it. Um, if you want to be happier in general in your life, this is 10 steps to a complete and happy you. Uh, can short-term thinking be generous? Yeah, but short-term, right? Short-term, not long-term, because they're short-term thinkers. So do you want to get in a relationship with a short-term thinker or a long-term thinker? Uh, I was praying and you showed up on my live. Can't wait to read these. Uh, you guys, you can get my books on Amazon. Um, if you want an audiobook right now, it's only a fix that shit and you can only get it through the link to in my bio. How do you try to communicate with someone who is weak mind and lack of commitment and trying to fix it? Why are you wasting your time? Why are you trying to be a therapist? Why are you dealing with a wounded bird instead of getting into a relationship with somebody you can start building a life with? What's the title of the free book again? The free book is Fake Love Need Not Apply. You are welcome. Uh... Long-term thinking is a goal for relationships um, because when I'm in relationship mode, I'm looking for somebody to take care of, to be kind to for a long period of time. Uh, -da 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 -da. You're just boring, dude. Boring. Boring with a fake picture. What do you think about staying with someone you met in high school? It's up to you, whatever works for you. Thank you for sharing your time and help with us. You're so welcome. Do you have a reading list? What is a reading list? Uh, I, I bought the audio and the book, love that. Um, I don't value the long term so much, but I'm glad you clarified, yes. Uh, so I do have a quiz in the link to my bio, by the way, it's a what book is right for you quiz. So if you guys want to see what order you want to read my books in, it actually lists them in the order you want to read them in. It shows a really cute little percentage bar beside each one too. How long should someone be engaged to their SO and then commit to marrying someone? So I do have a minimum. Um, so like minimum three months to get to know somebody. 
if you don't know them before committing to a relationship. Minimum a year of dating before moving in together. You can spend 365 days over at each other's houses, whatever, but two people, two places until a year has gone by and then you can be two people, one place. Um, once you live together, wait another year before getting engaged and married. These time frames are meant to help you better understand how the two of you function together from you know phase to phase to phase. So how you function together during the courtship phase, how you function together during the reality phase, how you function together living together in each other's spaces and sharing bills and responsibilities. Oh, I left a comment on one of your videos. I hope you're able to answer it. Uh, it depends, depends, depends. Um, where are my readers at? Where are my readers? Where are my readers? Where are my readers? There are minimums? Question mark, question mark. If you show up and you start working somewhere and they have benefits, do they not have a minimum amount of time that you need to be working there before they give you like medical and dental benefits? Or how does it work for you guys? Here. Oh, my husband got his settlement, hid the amount for me and is spending without my input. That don't sound right. That don't sound right. I have to go. So sad. Bye, my love. Until next time. Goodbye, lovely. What's 90? Here and 90. Reading your books here. Love it. Um, those of you who are reading my books or have read my books, um, will you be willing to leave an Amazon review? Even if you don't want to write words, are you willing to leave stars? Um, this is really super important to me. My love language is words of affirmation. If you feel like I've helped you, benefited you, and you'd like to, you know, and you love me for it, and you want to show me some love, um, are you willing to go leave an Amazon review or a Google review if you haven't read any of my books? I'm going to start reading your books. I love it. Love it. Do you have a book suggestion for me? If you're single, no more assholes. If you're in a relationship, fix that shit. Me and my boyfriend broke up, but he wants me to tell him if I go to a bar, what does that mean? It means you need to block him. It means you need to block him. You were not in a relationship together. He's trying to control and micromanage you uh, even though you're not together. That's not okay. That sounds toxic. I've been waiting for you to go live to ask a question. If beauty had a name, oh, don't hit on me, by the way, I will block you. I will block you. Yes, I will. I love it. What do you think is the average age when guys get it together? I'm not sure there really is. I That's not something I've specifically studied. I had a really tough morning, so I meditated, felt a lot, a little better, and I thought of you, and that's beautiful. Love that. You asked how many days before insurance begins? Most places, 90 days. Got it. Uh, got it, right? So so that's, you know, like like my point with that is you need to put insurance on your heart when you're dating. And so what you're doing is you're saying, hey, um, before I give you the benefits, I need to know that you're a good employee. Do you know what I mean? Before I give you the benefits, I need to know that this is going to work out, right? So businesses do that, but your standards are lower. Does that make any sense? Like they do this to protect themselves from giving away things they shouldn't be giving to people who don't deserve it. And yet you're not going to have that same standard for yourself. You're just going to give away things to people who ultimately don't deserve it. That's not fair. And nobody should expect that of you. Nobody should demand that of you. And nobody should expect that of you. So when you bring up the no kissing for three months dating rule and they're like, no, then you say, then keep going. Because obviously you're sitting here demanding. I give you something I don't even know you deserve yet. Do you think that's fair to me? I mean, obviously that benefits you. But is that fair to me? Do you care about what's fair to me? Because it doesn't seem like it when you demand I give you a kiss before three months is up. When you demand I kiss somebody I don't know. Works great for you. Do you care about me? Because I definitely want to get in a relationship with somebody who cares about me. So if you're telling me you're going to walk away if I use a no kissing for three months dating rule, I'm telling you 
please go. So during the three months, is it dating exclusively? No, because no kissing means no commitment. Everybody you are talking to and getting to know has the same ground rules. No kissing, no sex, no sleepovers until I've known you for at least three months. And then you see, you see who these people show up as. You see who is consistent. You see who is thoughtful, kind, generous, and interested in you as a human being not just in what they're going to get from you. <clears throat> You're welcome. Uh, do get no more assholes, my love, so that you understand how to like practice this. Um, how to bring up the rule, why you're bringing it up, the science, the motivation behind it, um, how to navigate those three months, what no kissing actually looks like. Um, I, I weave stories into here, you guys. Like I've done this myself and I, I don't just tell you, I show you how to do this. Uh, lovelies, I am going to go, time for me to make some food. I gotta make some food, we gotta eat. I, 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 don't, I don't eat until after lunch. I have a coffee in the morning and then I just, I, I, run, on, I run on my morning energy. Um, but it's time for me to make some lunch. Um, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to set yourself up to get a notification when I go live because I'm loosey goosey on this. You never know when I'm gonna show up. And I, I do these Q and A's. Um, so for those of you who want a notification when I come back on live, click on my picture up here once or twice, you're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on that bell. When you do that, say, I just did. Uh, so for your, your friend, they would need to get a coaching session in order for me to help them in a particular situation. Um, you know, when you guys ask for particulars, the advice I give you is worth every penny because I literally don't have enough details to give you a professional, um, you know, advice on this. So this, this is always worth, worth everything that you pay for it. Um, if it helps you great, if it doesn't, don't blame me because you didn't get a coaching session. Um, so if, if they want help, they can come get a coaching session. Uh, so uh, those of you who are setting yourself to get notifications, when you get a minute, um, go into your settings on TikTok, turn on your notifications in there. If you need to, um, you know, turn on your push notifications in your phone too. If he goes uh, for a kiss, I say I like to get to know someone, takes about three months. No, you have this conversation before they move in for a kiss. Don't reject somebody. You have to communicate. You have to be very open about who you are, what your goals are, what your plans are, and how you're going to achieve that. So you do need to, um, you you do absolutely need to communicate that before they move in for a kiss. All right, Mwah. I love you guys. I will see you soon. I will see you soon because you know I never stay away for long. Mm. I'll see you later, my lovelies.